Welcome to another Node-RED video and today I want to talk about these amazing gauges that you can see on the screen. I'm not really sure if you are subscribed to or if you registered to the Node-RED forum but I do and sometimes I get these weekly digest emails and this came up on the top of the email most probably because it is a very hot topic at the moment and some guys have started working on these gauges and I think they are absolutely fantastic. So it started out like this, um, a little bit more organized than my example, and then there has been a lot of changes, uh, you know, small tweaks, changes in the visuals, as you can see, uh, some new styling, like more like a brass styling, or there is uh, even this uh, wood grain-like finish, and also there was a lot of um, a functionality added, and, and I just absolutely love this. I mean, I, I think it looks so good. I mean, if you want to build a dashboard with these gauges, uh, probably you need a, a few more visual elements, maybe like switches, which also like this, uh, you know, more realistic retlow style. But if you only want gauges I, I, and you have full of them on, on one screen, I think it will be look absolutely fabulous. And the discussion is, is, you know, there is a lot of comments and there is a lot of changes like uh, tweaking here and there. Um, on how things look like and okay what you can do with the gauges and and even things like how the uh, the needle is going to look like or whether the gauge has one needles or two needles and I think towards the end there is this uh, there are these changes on making the needles pointy or you know like the gauge having a gradient colors and I was looking at all these things like I was trying to understand one thing and then two, two new features popped up there is as you can see so many uh, things are happening on the same day and I thought well I, I also want to play with this and that there was so many good things that I just wanted to uh, collect them in in a single page so I started picking a couple of these examples and putting them into a single dashboard um, so if you are interested in these then uh, you can also take my example and I'm going to go walk you through some of these things uh, how you can customize the gauges and um, and also give you my version of the node red flow but i'm only taking examples from others so this is not really any of my work i just uh, i just want to share it on my channel as well because i think they look absolutely amazing and before i start to talk about how these gauges work so these are as you can see in the node red flow these are basically ui elements and you are sending in the the value that you want to display and everything is actually implemented in style sheet. So as you can see, the, the code is just an HTML code and most of the HTML code is just, you know, creating certain classes. And then the style sheet will take care of, um, you know, rendering the needle in the correct position, in the correct orientation or the ticks or, you know, displaying the number. Uh, and there is a little bit of code at the end which is doing a, you know, a small calculation based on, you know, what is the minimum and the maximum value which is being displayed and then, you know, what value your value is and that basically calculates a percentage within the, uh, you know, within the chart where the needle should be pointing to. But I'm going to take you through all of these, but you will see that pretty much all of them are, are going to be the same. And top of all these UI, um, uh, gay, sorry, UI templates, is it, is it a UI template? Yeah, it's a UI template. There is yet another UI template on the top which contains all the styles. And as you can see, this gets added to the head section. So it, it goes to the, um, you know, adds the additional styles. And it also has a couple of declarations uh, like uh, what is the needle color? What is the second needle color? So you can see that the needle is black and the second needle in this particular one is red. And then a couple of other things like um, the uh, the different sectors and what are the colors of these. So these are the, the sectors. I have a couple of examples of those. And then um, basically you just have all the different um, classes that are used for, you know, for the body and the various sectors, the ring, the plate, and, and pretty much everything. You can see the uh, ticks here. And... At, I mean, if you, I mean, I'm not really an expert in CSS. I mean, I understand a lot of things, but I wouldn't be able to do all these because there is a lot of transformation here. So as you can see, you define the 
the uh, size or the shape of the tick and then basically you rotate it into position depending on the value that is being displayed so I never thought that something like this is possible with um, style sheet but there is a lot of you see some calculations here that are referring to values that we are setting as uh, like um, a style values I didn't even know that you can create your own variables in in CSS but apparently you can so there is a lot of, uh, you know, very, very smart stuff in here. So if you want to, like, learn advanced CSS, I think this is a great project. So you can look through these. But even if you don't understand any of the CSS, I would, I would now explain you how you can customize your gauges, like I did um, in this example. And actually, they are quite easy. So they're very easy to understand. So let's look at the different sizes, uh, first of all. So you can see there is a small gauge and there are a bigger gauge and even a bigger gauge and the, um, we have um, some differences in the in these ticks as well but let's look at the size first so first of all in uh, you specify the size here so this uh, gauge is four by four and the next gauge is i think it's five by five and the last one is six by six so this is the first thing that you need to define and then what you also need to define is up here on the top you um, you specify the container size and this is also this distance um, shows you how far the ppb let me show you so how far these numbers are displayed so the lower number means that the as these numbers are you know much closer to the center so this is sort of how you you can you can scale the numbers uh, but basically you just uh, you can just copy these examples just make sure that you know if your if you want to 4 by 4 then the container size 4 and the distance 13 looks good and also you can specify how many tick, big ticks you want and how many sub ticks and also you specify the unit in here and um, so that's about the size so you can see that on the biggest one first of all the size here is uh, six by six and let's just ignore the uh, the ones up here but you can see that the container size is six is uh, six and the distance well it's uh, 13 i think it was uh, sorry this is 14 and i think it was 13 previously but then the rest is the same so that's how you specify the size Next, look. let's look at how you do the basic um, letters, so, uh, or the, the units and, uh, and whatever you are measuring here. So, as you can see, for all of them, there is a text here which says temperature and, or the humidity or pressure, and there is a unit of measure here. And that also you can specify in the code. So, first of all, the unit of measure is right here. On the first line and then the text which is the temperature is you pretty much have to uh, you know scroll here where you see this g dash label and that's where you set the temperature which uh, needs to be displayed so that's the that's the text and also down here in the code further down in the piece of javascript code and uh, th that's where you are setting the, the value which is getting displayed here. So this is the big value, the actual value. So if you don't want that to display, this uh, to be shown, you just want the needle, you can just delete this last line or, uh, or maybe instead of V, you can just put like, you know, double quotes like uh, nothing. Uh, one more thing I want to also say is that uh, in here, in well, in a lot of, e sorry a lot of these examples uh, you will see that in the code it shows that i'm showing the the number v i think i have done an example here so instead of putting a percentage here i'm i'm putting like the number and the percentage and i have done it as it's this one and if i scroll down you can see it says v plus and then the percentage so if you want to add the unit there you can do as well but there is one more thing I wanted to say about 
these specific values and and for that i just need to show well give you a little bit of understanding how this works so all these uh, gauges they expect that the gauge starts here and it finishes here so this is all always a zero mark and this is like a, a 100 mark as in like zero percent and the 100 percent position of the needle and in the code when it um, calculates the the v you can see that there is a min max value so we are displaying this v value here um, which is basically the percentage of the needle as i said but if you are trying to show values that are not in the 0 to 100 range for example all the gauges that you can see here so uh, this pressure gauge is showing from 0 to 500 psi so there i'm sent i'm actually sending values 1 to uh, sorry 0 to 500 so what i have done instead of showing the v which would give you the value 1 to 100 where uh, sorry, 0 to 100, where 0 would be, you know, 0 PSI and 100 would be 500 PSI. I'm actually printing the message.payload here. So these are the basic elements of the uh, of the gauge, the size, uh, the, the measure, whatever you're measuring, the unit and the actual value. So now let's talk about the these ticks and the numbers. And I'm going to play around with these as well, but maybe it's better if you understand how this is all built up. And again, for that, we just have to look at the one of the codes. And um, here you have to understand the HTML uh, a little bit as well. And it is going to look pretty much the same for most of the examples. So you have always have the body and you have the ring and you have the rivets. So that's basically the outside ring and you have the rivets so these divs are going to print these rivets so for example if you don't want any of the rivets to shown you can just delete this section and then you have the plate which is the you know the face plate and within that plate you have the ticks so first you have you can have 11 big ticks so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and these numbers are basically the tick positions. So this is going to be tick number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, the big ones. And if you don't want any of them to be shown, you can just delete it. I'm going to show, give you an example a little bit later. And then you can also define the subticks. So you can see subtick. And then they also have positions 1 to 100. Sorry, 0 to 100. But of course, you don't have to show the small or sub ticks uh, where you have oh, sorry where you have the big ticks so this is why this is position one and and ten sorry no mm, let me just say so you don't have a sub tick at position one because that's where you have a big tick also you don't have a um, at 11 because that's where the big tick is so your sub ticks are always like from two to basically 10 and 12 to 20 and 22 to 30 um, and then finally you also have the numbers and again the numbers can be on the same position as the big ticks sorry again uh, and then you just put you know whatever number or text that uh, you want to get displayed here so again here uh, when I, we look at the latest examples you can see that i have a uh, gauge is different from 1 to 100 but that's the basic you know shape of the gauge and now if you look at the first column um, i also find these examples where the ticks have different colors based on let's say if it's temperature this is a really high temperature and that's like the normal temperature range or here you just have one uh, sector or one um, i don't know one range and you can see that in these examples where we only have two colors you see that um, the ticks that are you know n plus n plus six or n plus nine they have a different really um, gradient and oops let me just give this full screen this is how you can define different colors for the different ticks so that's the uh, example where you have just black and red at the end so you can see the different colors here and if you have free 
then oh i think i made the uh, the labels the wrong way around so obviously this is the one where there is only two so basically from uh, the big ticks uh, from n plus n plus nine it would have a different color and for you know 73 plus uh, it is going to have a different color and the rest is going to be just a standard black and of course if for any reason you want slightly different colors so you want the ticks to have a different color you can always come here to the to the main uh, ui template which is defining all the um, styles so you can probably find the ticks and this is a tick and here it has a color uh, sorry this is the background oh yeah this is uh, this has a color so um you know you can you can change it here if you want different colors I hope I understand it correctly because this is not a part that I've played with. But I think these are good. I mean, I, I like the fact that um, probably this is less typical. No, no, no. I would say I think I have seen gauges where the the numbers and the ticks have different colors. But also, what happens in most cases, like you know, pressure or temperature gauges, that they have like different sectors. So this is like a danger sector, and. Um, uh, there was one example here which basically can create four of these sectors. So this has one single sector and this has four sectors. And if you look at these examples, um, if you just have a high sector, then, you know, your HTML or, yeah, so the HTML is pretty much the same. The only difference here, no, it's further up here. So um, within the plate, uh, just before the ticks, you define a div which is like that so it's sector high and again I have to go up to the gauge and I have to find the sector high so these are the sectors and then I have a sector high and as you can see it uses the sector high color which is defined up here and and then it's basically a, um, a rectangle which is getting transformed so if you want uh, to move this around so it, um, so this rectangle is transformed that it's now going to cover like in this case 20 percent but if you want to move this up you can create uh, you can change this rotating angle and that's going to basically rotate that sector around and then in this example we are also going to see how we can make it smaller um, like you know for example so this green only covers what is it like 11 um, 11 ticks so I mean these are a little bit diffi more difficult to understand and here what is happening is you have four of these divs so which have the class sector sub sector low sector normal sector high so these define the different colors and um, in here basically in the HTML we override the transformation which is the shape so you can see that uh, they being rotated to 133 degrees 251 degrees uh, 318 and 348 degrees and you can see in the skew this is how you can control the actual angle so you have to play with this a little bit if you want different shapes um, this was I mean it was really finicky to get this set up um, so <laughs> I was pretty much lazy. I just uh, left the example that I got from the forum. So, um, but I guess you have the idea how that works. And I've never used, uh, you know, this transform, especially not the rotate or the skew command in uh, CSS before. But that's basically just the div with a black, with a, a green, sorry, blue, red, green background and tr some transparency. This is why the ticks uh, show through because I think it's. Yeah. Oh, no, no, actually it's under the ticks, but then probably this is sort of like the shading of the plate shows through. And I also have another example here. So um, I think this would make sense if you have smaller gauges, how you can just uh, remove or reuse the number of ticks. As you can see here, I have half a number of big ticks and then uh, the sub ticks are only at the, the 10 positions. So if I look at this code, let me close this one. So this is the fewer ticks. Let me just make it full screen. So 
you see the big ticks are in position 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11. So this is 1 and then there is nothing in 2 but 3, 5, 7, 9 and 11. And then the sub ticks are in 11, 31, 51, 71, 91. And these are the basically the small divisions in between. You know, normally you don't have the small ticks in the other example because that's where the big ticks are. But now, um, so these numbers are basically just defining the, the location here. So this is always 1 and that would be, uh, I think that would be 100 if I remember correctly. Or 101, but you probably never do small subtick at the last position. And I've also reduced the uh, the uh, the numbers. So as you can see, just uh, again, I have big ticks in position one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and also I have text in one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and the numbers change accordingly. But other than that, the rest of the HTML code is the same. So this is how you can create a fewer number of ticks. Next one, um, I also quite like this one. This looks like that the, uh, uh, the gauge has a backlight and actually it is very, very simple because the only difference here in this HTML code compared to the other ones is that it just uses a different class. So again, in the it says uh, g-plate-bright. And again, if you go up, sorry, where is it? So if you go up here and... Uh, uh, yeah, so that's the standard G plate and you can see the, I think, yeah, this box shadow is um, this color and now the box shadow has a yellow color. So this is, oh, and also there is some change here in the gradient. Oh, actually there is more change here. But um, so you can have different backlights. Maybe if you don't want a yellow backlight, just the, you know, like a brighter one, you can play around with these values and uh, just create your own uh, style and just a reference to that style or sorry class in the HTML. But that's actually nice. And I think somebody is even, so if I look at one of the recent uh, changes, I can see that somebody has actually created a button so you can change the backlight on and off, which basically just, you know, toggles the class uh, for that uh, specific div. Uh, let me just turn on my phone or mute it. So I think that that was also a good idea. Finally, uh, not finally, but the next one is uh, this one, which has two needles. And for that, I've modified the code as well. Um, so you see that the rest of the flow is uh, basically just have a timer, sorry, a inject node, which fires every second. And there is a random node, which uh, generates a random number between minus five and five. And this uh, code, this function code, it's, um, it just uh, takes a starting number and then it just adds the random number. And, and of course it makes sure that it caps at 100 or at zero. And it just sends the number out and then the gauge picks it up. So in the second needle, the code is a slightly bit different or slightly more complicated because it also tracks the maximum value. And then um, if the maximum value changes, it sends out another message or it sends out actually two messages. The first one is the normal message, which shows you the, well, it sends the actual number. And it also sends another uh, message, which has a topic max. And that's going to show the max number. And I might need to, uh, conf not configuration nodes, um, context. And you can see that the max is 100, so let me just delete that. And now we can see that it's getting reset and the max needle travels with the actual needle now. Oh, and actually I can bring it down as well. So, delete. So this max needle follows and it's under the, the normal needle. So let's say I see how this code looks like. The beginning is pretty much the same. The first change which we are going to see here is here. So we have um, 
Um, normally we just have a needle class, but there is a needle second class, which, which comes first, so it's under the, the needle. And also the function node is, is slightly, um, it's a, a little bit different. So normally you have this line which calculates the relative position, and then you have this line which sets the gauge value, and then you have this line which updates the text. So now there is an if function which says if the topic is max, then instead of setting the dash dash gauge value, we set the dash dash gauge value second. So this is, uh, as I said, it's a, like a custom, custom variable. And also here you said you have a dash dash gauge value, initial value is zero, and you have a second value. I just set the initial value to 80, but probably you can re uh, reduce that to uh, zero as well. And, uh, and we are setting the value, like the relative value of these, depending on whether we are getting a topic max or we are, whether we are getting anything else. And, and again, just like before, the magic happens in the main CSS, where the tick is being, not the tick, sorry, the needle is being defined. And as you can see, the, the, you know, it, it defines a needle that it has sort of like this dot and this um, very skinny rectangle. And that is being re rotated based on the gauge, dash dash gauge dash value. And, um, and then um, another class is also created, which is the needle second, which looks pretty much the same as the other one. Let me just do it full screen so you can see the changes. Um, but as you can see, this has a color of, uh, where is the color? Okay, so this has a color of um, a needle color and this has a color of needle color, needle second color. So that's referenced up there. And also here you can see that the transformation, the first one is using the dash dash gauge value and this was using the dash dash gauge value second. So that's being rotated based on, you know, one value or the other. And the needle ticks are defined up here. Uh, so theoretically, you could create more of these variables, more of these classes, and you could have more ticks than, you know, just to, if you want to also have a minimum tick, you can just define yet another tick, also update the calculation, and, and that's going to work as well. I mean, you know, the gauge itself is not going to take care of this. You have you just have to send the each needle value uh, probably separated by a topic, just like I did here. But um, yeah, I mean, that's again how you would see, a, for example, a pressure or temperature gauge, which usually have a max needle, which is mechanically being, you know, coupled to the main needle, so it also carries it away. And finally, uh, in the last section, I just used a smaller gauges, so it, I can have more fit on the screen. I just also wanted to experiment how you can uh, do ranges that are separate from 0 to 100. So for the first of all is the pressure. You can see it goes from 0 to 500. So the uh, the function is also changed because the you know the mean and the max is is zero to five hundred. By the way, not all these uh, function codes are the same. I just kept copy and uh, copy and pasting them and making slight modifications. But basically, uh, but pretty much like you define the max here and the mean, so it should generate the values from uh, zero to five hundred, and then you set it into the gauge and. Again, few changes need to be made. Well, first of all, you know, it, it shows PSI, so I changed that. Um, the, the rest is unchanged, and the change is actually here in the function scope, or the function node, the JavaScript code at the end. And um, I haven't talked about this yet, or not in a great detail, but there is also like a min and max value, and that's, again, used in this calculation to calculate the relative position of the needle. So all you need to know, all you need to do is change the mean and the max value here. And as I said before, uh, you make sure that this shows message.payload instead of v because then if you use v you are getting the relative value. And obviously in the tags you just uh, use different values so it, uh, basically just you know, stop set. It, it's 
counts every 50, so it goes all the way to 0 to 500. You know, that's, that's standard. Or, sorry, nothing special about that. The next example is where I have a range where the starting value is not zero. So this is measuring temperature in Kelvin, so maybe you have a supercomputer where it needs to be chilled between 20 and 30 Kelvins. And um, so the code, um, the function code just, again, limits the values between 20 and 30. And why did I press cancel? So let's look at the HTML code. And here, I mean, I haven't really changed anything on the ticks or the main subticks. The values, you can see it's, it goes from 20 to 30, the numbers, and also the minimum and the maximum goes from 20 to 30. And um, this particular chart, because, you know, it's such a, uh, sorry, gauge, because it's uh, showing um, such a sort of like four, a small values, um, the function node is sending in float values and I added this message.payload.toFixed2 so I'm only getting two decimal places here otherwise it would be like a long float value which is going to extend you know beyond the plate and it's just going to look ugly so this is how you can reformat the number so you have to send in a number otherwise the calculation is not going to work so you just have to do the formatting here so for example just to get two decimal places. Or maybe if you don't want any, then you can just have two fix uh, zero. And finally, I also wanted to experiment with um, how you can make the, the scale or the ticks um, to only cover a smaller p, uh, place of the gauge. I don't know how to say it in English. So basically, you know, normally it starts from here. I just... Uh, um, omitted the first and the last sort of sector here in the faceplate. So let's say this is measuring voltage from 200 to 240 volts. So let's look at the HTML code. So there's going to be a few changes here. So first of all, I didn't want a big tick to be drawn here and a big tick to be drawn here. So I deleted the lines where uh, for tick position 1 and 11. And also I didn't need the small ticks in this sector and this sector. So obviously there's nothing here. So I deleted the lines from, I think uh, it's from 1 to 10. And also the, the last section, which is from 91 to 100, I think. Um, on the numbers, Instead of, I, I could have deleted the lines as well, but I wanted to leave it here so you can see that, uh, uh, I mean, technically this big tick position is still here and the number position is still there, but I'm just not displaying anything, so I just left it as empty. So that takes care of the visuals. So now the, the um, yeah, that scale is, is going to be shorter. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical. I mean, I could have left this one and then stopped at 240 if I wanted to. But there is a trick. Because all the calculation assumes that the zero position of the needle is here and the 100 position of the needle is here. Um, of course, it doesn't really care about like what is being displayed on the scale. So what I have done for the min and the max is I set them into 190 because technically if I had in position 1 it would be 190 because you know it steps by 10 so that would be 190 and the last position would be two four, sorry, 290 so the mean and the max is 190 and the max is 290 and the rest of the code is the same so that's a small trick which uh, we are just basically not displaying part of the uh, part of the chart but if you are sending a value of 290 the needle is actually going to point here or if you are sending 190 the needle is going to po uh, point there so the you know the code doesn't care it's going to do the calculation but uh, um, it's just going to look weird so you, within your um, node red flow you have to take care of not sending a data below 200 or above 280 unless you want that to because even in normal gauges they can you know sort of like go around. I mean, I guess some of them can do. And I think that's pretty much it. So um, 
As I said, this thread is continuously evolving and there is new stuff being drawn here. As you can see, this has a different uh, faceplate. You know, it doesn't have the round thing and the rivets. And that's probably, again, just down to uh, different CSS on the top or different style sheets. Um, but um, yeah, maybe I'm just going to leave it for a couple of weeks and come back and, and try to implement one of the um, uh, interesting changes into my flow. But I think for the time being, that should be it. Even these examples are going to give you a lot of, um, um, you know, variations for the same um, gauge style. Because after all, I mean, the style is different, but there is a lot of customization option within these scales and, and so this internal uh, look and feel. But if you would want like different styles, like different colors of the, of the round, uh, sort of these plates like one of the brass ones obviously you also have to make changes here because you have to add the you have to create duplicate uh, uh, classes for some of these components just like i have duplicate uh, duplicate classes for the plate this is how i'm doing the backlight or well not me but how somebody did the backlight and also how we have different needles uh, because uh, we just created a new class for the uh, first and the second needle, which pre does all, pretty much the same thing, but uh, have different colors. So that would be the way to implement uh, these different changes. And if you're looking at the, the forum and you're copying and pasting examples, always keep in mind that some of these guys, they have different styles. So if you just copy and pasting the UI, um, nodes, sorry, these UI nodes with display the gauges, it might not look similar because they have different styles up here in the gauge styles. And of course, if they're using the same uh, styles or sorry, classes, then you can have either or uh, either one of the styles. Or you make the changes that I just explained. So I think that's it for now. I'm already talking for more than half an hour. And actually, it was a pretty good recording. I don't think I have to cut out a lot, but um, that was a lot to explain. I, I hope I managed to give you a lot of different variations and that give that is going to give you a lot of ideas how you can use these gauges. And, and again, just uh, um, remember that there is more stuff is being done. So if you are interested, also look at that discussion in the forum. I'm going to leave all the links in the video description, a link to this forum. If, well, if you can't find it by the title. And also I'm going to give a link, uh, like a downloadable link to this uh, flow that I've created here. So at least you can play around with all these variations and then um, use them in your layout that you want to create. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.